up everybody this is Don Ward with third creative thirdcreative.com in this video we're going to take a look at coyotes football 2019 this is my most recent template it is for football uh, currently and I have plans to uh, make some additions to this to make it a multi-sport and try to tackle some other field sports and also court sports as well uh, but for now we're going to concentrate on football it's fall, football's here, so I wanted to get something out. And I wanted to get something out that would uh, give you guys a lot of options, and I think I've done that. Um, but before we get started, we'll talk about what this bundle comes with. Um, I'm back to offering five files, uh, which is what I believe I'm going to stick with. Um, give you some options there. We're going to continue with the 12 by 36 panoramic, which is what you see here at the bottom. Uh, we're going to continue to offer two verticals and two horizontals. So you'll get a 16 by 20 and a 16 by 24, which that 16 by 24 is a 2 by 3 ratio. Uh, for anybody that didn't already know that, it's great for larger images, great for banners. Um, and there's a lot of different options that are built into the these uh, files. Um, you can go a lot of directions with it. I think this works great for really all ages, but especially uh, for high school and senior banners. I think it has that college NCAA poster feel to it, which I think will be a big hit. Um, before we jump into the template itself, I want to kind of go over some sample images, some images that a lot of you may have already seen. They're on the website and on social media, but just some examples. We'll start off with the vertical. Um, this is a double image, um, so you have the option to place a full body uh, image of your athlete on this graph surface here, and then you also have the option to place uh, another image of your athlete behind them. Um, but there's all sorts of combinations that you could do. Um, this next one, um, we have multiple uh, full body images, some simulated action with the uh, with the upper body shot still behind them, kind of faded. We'll talk about that also. Uh, another option is to lose the grass altogether, and in this case, I put what six different images in here, um, and then you'll also notice something cool that I did here. I don't know why I'm violently moving my pen here, but uh, I've got a built-in schedule option, which is really easy, and uh, it's customizable colors, of course, the text, everything. Um, something that I've heard a lot of people asking about or looking for, so hoping that it will come in handy for you. Um, another option that you have is to just go single image real traditional so if you don't want to bother with shadows and and worrying about having the right light fall off and and all of that you want to keep it simple you have this option uh let's see what do we have next so here we lose the image in the back and we stick with just the grass and the full body so you can go with multiple images on there for that poster feel this one also i used the schedule for or you can just limit it to one athlete um, what else we have? Okay, we've got our horizontals here. So this is the uh, 16 by 24, and on this one I decided to um, use some images, upper body images behind the full body. Um, I chose not to shoot an entire football team or even, you know, multiple football players. I shot one young man who did a great job and uh, used his images for everything here. Something I normally don't like to do, but I was in a bind. I needed to get these out quickly. So uh, I think it illustrates the effect and gives you an idea. Um, you have to use a little less imagination to have a visual. But um, you can place as many, uh, as many players on here that will fit. And you can place these upper body images behind them. You can go with the helmet or without the helmet. Um, lots of options here. You also notice up here we've got a uh, different text or a different layout of the text. This is a, a wider option so um, you have that sh uh, that more tall narrow option takes up more space maybe one that you would use more on a vertical than a horizontal. 
but you have both options so if you're limited in space and this works better for you then you can opt for this one um, as opposed to this one um, so here you have an example of just full body on the uh, horizontal as well but enough of that let's get let's get started let's jump in on this thing I'm going to show you some things with both the horizontal and the vertical um, and just like always I want to start down here with the bottom folder which is background it includes your sky it's got a little bit of grunge that's what you see here in the corners and then it's got a grunge um, layer as well to give you just a little bit of texture um, can't see it but it's got some levels and saturation adjustments here this is really stuff that you'll probably leave alone and unless you find a reason to go in there and make some adjustments um, I did include this color overlay it's optional um, I just anticipated that some of you may want to add color to this white background and it's my personal opinion that it doesn't look as good as the solid white but if you wanted to add some color to the background it is set to overlay you can um, of course adjust it um, but this particular layer affects just this background it doesn't affect the grass or the text or uh, the lights or anything like that so let's turn that off and let's take a look at this grass option so if we open this up we've got actually two grass options and they are clipped to this shape which also has a layer for dirt and you can turn it on and off if you ever want to uh, skew or resize this you will want to highlight both dirt and the shape option or layer uh, before you do any uh, rescaling or uh, or if you want to stretch it out or do anything like that so make sure you use both of those but let's take a look this top option is kind of a, at an angle and of course you can just select that layer only and you can move it around um, depending on the look that you want you can scale it down it's got a little tree line back there that you may want not want to show um, you can scale it up um, this is an image that I took at our local college so just make sure you keep any of those details out of there but you get the idea of what your options are the other one is uh, straight lines and this is also taken at our local college same concept you can make it smaller make it bigger you can move it around you have those options next we have lights we'll take a look at the lights um, I like to keep them in separate folders so you have the actual light itself and then you have the layers in this folder that give the appearance of the lights actually being on and it consists of a few layers um, Probably nothing you really want to mess with too much but if you turn this off for example you can see up here uh, the layer uh, for the actual light um, so if you do anything with them make sure that you select this is the left pole this is the left light on and off so if you wanted to move that make sure that you select both of them if you want to scale it if you want to scale everything up and down you can just stick with the uh, entire folder here but there's six folders for three lights and you can move them around you can do a lot with those uh, keeping it moving this next layer we have is a hue slash saturation adjustment layer it will apply a blanket effect over the grass and the background and the lights um, so if you want to use that I kind of have it set to a reddish um, color but you can uh, come up here it is uh, set to colorize but you can play with the lightness and the darkness and the saturation if you go too dark you start to lose some of that detail that doesn't really look right um, of course you can play with the colors uh, let's undo all of that if we can let's turn that off all right next we have a layer for your top subject so this is where you would it's actually a background subject so I have this sample image in here 
And then I also have a flare on shoulder. So if I turn those off, if you look at the shoulder, it just adds a little kind of flare and glow. It's an extra nice touch, a little bit of atmosphere. You can reproduce these and use them as much as you want to. Um, of course, you can always right click and duplicate layer. Um, and you can place them anywhere. It, it adds a nice effect. Um, there is a gradient mass that you can adjust depending on how much you want to show and how much transition that you want. Um, but it has these adjustment layers clipped to it and that's what will give you this faded look. So with our levels, um, looking at the levels window, I have reduced the, the darks quite a bit. So if I go back, you can see that's what it looks like uh, normally but you can adjust these darks as much as you want to. Um, and if you're not familiar with levels adjustments, there's lots of videos out there. You should check it out. I use levels adjustments quite a bit. Um, and then it also has this hue slash saturation, um, which also helps give us this faded look that we have here. If I turn that off, it's much more saturated. I like it a little desaturated with the foreground image a lot bolder and more saturated but of course you can adjust this as well you can increase the saturation you can drop it down to black and white whatever uh, kind of look you're going for uh, let's see the next one we have um, subject bottom so this is going to be where you'll place any subjects that are going to be on the grass and uh, we'll take a look at this I left all of these rather than merging these I wanted to kind of show you some things that I did for shadow I have two layers that I added here. I have my sample image, and then I have this exposure adjustment layer. So I want to explain what I did here. If I turn all of that off, this looks okay, but it doesn't quite look like uh, he quite belongs. And before I keep going, I'm going to go back and turn this other grass layer on. So his feet look a little bit too bright to me, and that's where this exposure adjustment layer comes in. So let me just delete that and show you what I did there and this is something that you can do if, if you get your uh, light fall off naturally uh, from the way you lit your subject then that's great but if it looks too bright like I think mine do I come down here and I add uh, there it is exposure adjustment layer and I clip it to my subject image and what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll adjust the exposure, how dark I think I want the legs to be. And right now it's going to affect the entire player image, but uh, let's not spend a lot of time. Let's just say that's where I want it. I will come over here to this layer mask, and then I will come over here and use my gradient tool, black to white, make sure. And I will hold shift and kind of do a straight line up, and this will mask out the effect I did it the opposite direction. Let's try that again. This will mask out the effect. Um, so I did that kind of quickly. You can play with it to get it, you know, how you like it. You mask it out, but I think it helps um, make it blend into this grass a little bit better. So these um, shadow layers, um, a lot of people have asked about shadow tutorials. Uh, I'm still not the greatest when it comes to shadows, at least as far as getting great shadows, uh, or in my opinion, great in a very short amount of time with little work. And so uh, what I've done here is very simple, um, and it may not be the best, but it just provides a, a little more realism. I think enough that works here. But I will um, I will leave those on, and I will just kind of start over. First thing I do is create a layer, and... I use my black brush. We're going to have a real quick shadow tutorial on how I did it for this and just kind of help you out because I know that's something that you guys, some of you are very familiar with and good at and some of you may have never done it and want to use this grass option. And if you don't add shadows, it's probably not going to look all that great. Um, so what I do is I bring my opacity down. I don't know. We'll just stop there, 16%. And I start painting in a contact shadow with black. 
and this is just the hard shadow that you get kind of right there where your feet make contact you don't want anything too bright I just paint in there to get that contact shadow initial initially there we go um, I'm doing this very fast so you might take a little more time now I'm going to use my bracket, right bracket key to increase this brush uh, somewhere in here. Now I'm going to zoom back out. Obviously looking at the subject, there's light coming from the front. Obviously looking at the background image, you have lights behind him. So really you have lights coming from all directions. And so what I do is just kind of paint in a very soft shadow kind of all around and I kind of come from the feet and get it a little bit darker painting towards this other foot get a little bit there here it's coming in pretty dark I might go ahead and drop my opacity down for the rest of it a little bit more get a little bit bigger just kind of paint around now if you get it too dark you can draw the opacity down To your liking somewhere in there and that's it you just want something to help them blend in now that's not a master tutorial so I'm sure a lot of you have better ways of doing it or uh, ways that look better but that's just something to to get you going without getting into anything too complex let's keep it moving all right, so let's uh, take a look at these text layers and how we would customize them. So we'll just open up this tall option to use an example. Within the tall option, you've got, uh, let's see here, four text layers. You've got football, which is your sport, your team name, which is the biggest text layer, your school name, and you've got your year here at the bottom. You also have this additional folder called Stripes and uh, this is where you control these stripes if you want to change the cover color excuse me click on color overlay it's very simple if you have a color code you can enter it if you don't you can use a dropper or you can uh, just do it by feel and you can change your color but let's say you wanted these stripes to come out further towards the edges. Let's say your team name is more than six letters. It takes up more space and you want the stripes to come out wider like your team name does. This is where you would come in here and, and uh, do some things and I'll walk you through it. So I have um, two folders here. This controls the left stripes. This controls the right stripes. And so what I would do is start with the left Use the arrow key on your keyboard, start moving it over to the left, and you really just want to look at the overall width and get it about as wide as you want. You can come down to the right and use the right arrow key, and let's say that's about how wide I wanted it right there. Well, this isn't even, so we need to fix that. So. We want to come up here and we want to have the stripes folder selected. I have this saved as a action and a shortcut button on my Wacom tablet. If you don't have this action saved yet, I suggest it. It's a great time saver. But what you do is you come up here to select all and you come over here to layer and come all the way down to align layers to selection. And we want to choose horizontal center. And basically what this will do is center everything that's within this folder that I have selected and so now it's centered um, problem is uh, football is not centered with the gap this uh, gap or opening here before I forget let's come up here and deselect is controlled by this layer mask so let's open this back up so we want to make sure that football is centered which it still should be we need to fix the opening here so what we'll want to do is come up to this uh, stripes folder, right click, let's delete that layer mask. So now this layer next or below, to, excuse me, below it, uh, it's entitled Mask Tool, see video, uh, this video we're making now. If you turn that on, I've got the fill all the way down, but what this does, it's just a square layer and it gives you a shape. And 
I'm going to center it as well. And let's say you want, you can adjust it to how close you want it to be, you know, to the letters where it says football. Uh, make sure you center it, and you can do that the same way that I just showed you, or use your action. Once you have it exactly centered and exactly the size that you want that represents where it'll be masked out, if you hold down Control or Command and click on this icon here, you'll get a selection. Now that you have that selection, if you highlight just the stripes layer and you come down and you add a layer mask, it will add this layer mask. Problem is, it's backwards. It needs to be in inverted. Very simple. Command or Control I, and now it's inverted. So now we have our spacing and hopefully that makes sense to everybody but quick and easy way to fix that and make your stripes wider make everything even um, it's real simple if you want to change color on any of these text layers um, if you have a character panel you can always do it here if you don't if you double click on the text layer you can always come up here enter your color code very easy all right now we that was, uh, that was quite a bit just there in that folder. All right, next let's take a look at the schedule option. If you turn that off, you can see it's going to overlap. So you'll need to move your team name text around uh, to make it work. But let's turn that off and just look at this a little bit closer. Okay, so first layer we have is a text layer. It's your 2019 schedule. You can change what it says. Um, you can change the color. And then I have each game broken down into its own folder. And it's respectively numbered 1 through 11. Now if you need more games, you can duplicate group, move it over, um, edit it, rescale it, center it and you can add games. You can take away games, but you can use these to reproduce them. Now, I added this little spacer bar, um, and it says see video. So basically this is a way where you can keep them all the same distance apart. Now, some of you Photoshop wizards out there might know a better or easier way um, to achieve even spacing, but what I did is I butted this up right up against um, and then you can even zoom in more, but right up against the letters. And so when I created another uh, group folder and I move it over with my arrow key, I get it to where it ends just on the other side. And that's how I made sure I got even spacing. Um, if you want, you know, different spacing, you can control the width of this and start from scratch and respace them if you're ambitious, if you really want to do all of that. Um, but otherwise, you can just come in and edit everything, change the colors, change what it says, and just make sure that you center everything up, and you'll be good to go. So I hope that's something you guys uh, put to use and uh, helps you out. Uh, last one, we have upper text layers. Really simple. We've got name, class slash position. So you can put their position. I have their class here, senior, and I have his name. Very simple, just a solid color. You can add gradients or bevels or whatever you want if, if you want a different look. But I like this just clean, solid look. Um, I think it works well with the overall uh, design. And there you have it. Uh, the vertical setup, same way as the horizontal as far as customization is concerned. Um, I hope that covers everything. As always, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, don at thirdcreative.com, and there is a contact option at the website as well that you can use. So, uh, again, I'm going to try to uh, expand on this design, get more field sports, baseball, uh, soccer, probably a few others, and uh, tackle the court sports as well basketball volleyball uh, see what we can do there so anyways that that concludes it i hope you guys like it i hope it serves you well i hope it uh, 
gives you that wow factor and makes you a lot of money. Uh, and I'll get right back at it and uh, see what I can come up with next. Appreciate you guys. Until next time. See ya.